Right here's the deal. When it comes to the economy, I see it doing just fine. Corporations are raking in billions with smaller labor forces, as I've said myriad times. You know, and then you got this, the, 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 the elections coming up, and you got this Jack and Dandy Rick Perry, and they're talking about he's the new front runner. He may move Mitt Romney right out of the deal, because Mitt Romney's a moderate and a Mormon, so he'll never win. And everybody loves Rick Perry because they remind him of George Dumbass Bush and think somehow things are going to get better, but here's the deal. Places like Texas talk this smaller government BS to sneak in their corporatist agenda. Using Texas as some sort of example of how small government benefits the people and creates jobs, but the reality is this, Jack and Dandies. That douche Rick Perry ain't done a goddamn thing. His state benefits from the fact that social services are slim to none, so corporations don't have to pay out of the ass like they did in California, where most of the places came from. Many of the jobs are low paying, they make tons of money from oil, the state does, so that the cost of living is low because it's also an agrarian state, and um, Rick Perry takes stimulus money from Obama, you know, so it must have some value to it for that douche. As much as I don't like Obama, but you know, here's the deal, to be honest, the only real way that jobs will be created across the board is for new industries to open up, like the dot-com boom, the telecommunications boom, and the last decade, and the, and the housing boom that created all those service jobs. There also has to be universal health care, so corporations don't have to pay benefits in any state, so they can focus on wages and infrastructure. As well as raising, as well as the government raising taxes on the rich and corporations. But let's face it, you know, the shit happening right now, these things happening right now, aren't helping these broke ass jack and dandies running around, working or being denied jobs they're overqualified for. It's pretty damn pathetic. To see construction workers, carpenters, and financial analysts trying to become checkout clerks, cooks, and medical assistants. Seeing some dude that was some kind of sociologist at Ed DeVry trying to get his, uh, I don't know, some kind of psychology degree so he can go work with at-risk youth or something. This is sad. This is the state we're in, though. And I were broke, and so now, no Obama, Obama being the strategist that he is, he's using NATO because he was about to just send guys, American troops, to go bomb the hell out of Gaddafi. But instead, he sends NATO to, to steal his goods for him. Because that's what we're doing, we weren't getting nothing from Gaddafi. They, we, we were uh, the little intermediary, they were, de they were dealing with Europe, man, and he was going to go on to the gold standard. Just like Saddam was going to go into the Euro and they took him down. You know? You all know by now what Gaddafi, the real Gaddafi's Libya was about. It's a lot different than what was shown by the media. There was housing for all citizens. It was considered a right to have housing, not a privilege like in America, where if you don't have the housing, you're done. You shouldn't be sleeping under a bridge either. You shouldn't do nothing. You should just stay out of the way of people with jobs. That's how America works. But in Libya, it was a lot different. It was housing for all citizens. The medical was on par with Europe's. It was free because it comes from the oil and the gold reserves. Their education was as well. Citizens were given subsidies to start farms, etc. The Berbers' land was protected. They stopped. They stopped. Um, you know, marginalizing them. They stopped trying to press their culture away like they're doing in Morocco. But people ain't gonna talk about that. Because Morocco jerks off America. Just like Bahrain jerks off America. So we're not going there. And Syria has a lot of good weapons that they get from Russia. So we're not going in there because we have engaged them like we engaged, you know, the uh, Gaddafi. You know, the native blacks as well as migrants did not take jobs from the Arab Libyans as well. That's like they like to say. Because... There's many Eastern Europeans and Asians in Libya as there are migrant blacks. And no one killed them. All groups were employed. They had their own enclaves, their own businesses, etc. There were no massacres, and the Nigerian government admitted that no 200 Nigerians were killed, although 40 were murdered in racist clashes. 
under Gaddafi's uh, Libya. There was a lot of ra there is a lot of racism, and now the NATO's back and they're back in those rebels. Blacks are getting slaughtered wholesale, and now even uh, little shill stations like a uh, Russian TV or Russia whatever Russia Today and uh, Al Jazeera English are starting to admit that. Even they're starting to admit that. What what everyone else already knew, anyone who's from Africa already knew. NATO will back them, and those people are going to die in cold blood, and nothing's going to happen to them because they're America's favorite new cabal. Now, there's a lot of countries that support the NTC. Niger's one of them, and a lot of people made these little stupid videos going, Gaddafi's their African brother. I don't, I don't know where all that BS is from, but he did do stuff for his people. He wanted to be the master and lord of Africa, which mm, yeah, I don't think that's good at all, but, you know. As far as his people were concerned, he was not massacring them. There was no reason to massacre them. No reason whatsoever. So that's bullshit from the West. It's a change you can believe in, I guess. But the thing is, one of the reasons why Niger supports the NTC is because, A, they don't want to deal with NATO in their business, especially with the Bako Haram or whatever those douchebags are, the Gambaris. B, Gaddafi supported Abacha, which is why I can't stand him. And not to mention he called for the breakup of Niger into a Muslim North and Christian South, ignoring the complexities behind the divide, which has nothing to do with tribalism or religion, an idiotic concept that has never pertained to the area. As many of the pre-colonial states, you know, when the pre-colonial states were fighting the same way, long before their religions the, the two Abrahamic religions invaded the area. You know, how organized states with multicultural populations that spend millennia are written off as tribes warring over differences is beyond me, but apparently not to white. So there you go. But anyway, back on track. Because the reason why they're fighting is because of uh, water and land for their cows and the other guys are farmers. So it's just uh, pastoralists. Pastoralist cattle ranchers versus the farmers. That's what's going on. That's why they're fighting. It's not about fucking Allah and Jesus. Idiots. Anyway, anyway, anyway. The deal is this. To get back on track. This Operation Destabilization or Arab Spring seems to be spreading as they've also taken out the Ivory Coast. And they've put down, put their uh, country in the hands of the pond waterer and his Burkina Bay supporters who had a stake in a proper country. They're doing the same, they've been trying to do the same thing in Central African Republic for a long time. France has, if they haven't succeeded already, and they're probably going to start in Angola since Angola's been very prosperous as of late. They've been doing well. They've been working with Portugal, Brazil, getting the tourism on track. Oil production's high. They paid off all the paid off Sierra Club, paid off the IMF, and now all of a sudden they're having riots and and people want to go to war and all this BS. So now they're going to spread. And now here's the deal. They want to stop this because they see what China's doing. So they're spreading the, the notion that China's starting to colonize the area when in reality that isn't beneficial to China. China wants to deal with stable alternatives to the U.S. and Eurozone. But if you keep those places from creating their own infrastructure, the West and its corporate masters remain relevant on the world stage. I see a lot more African nations biting the bullet in the name of democracy pretty soon. I just, it's, it's coming down the pike. In Libya's case, King Abdullah, the Jews, and the West have been using the people in the Arab countries' protest of high food costs created from the rising costs of wheat and corn to fuel ethanol cutting in oil to replace the hand-selected dictators who lost their favor. Egypt was more or less a fluke. They certainly didn't want him to fall, and Gaddafi is somewhat the same, but I think in that case... You know, Europe, America wanted to get their hands on the uh, transaction that was going to take place between Libya and the Eurozone. If America could be the middleman in that situation, they'll make money hand over foot. It's push taking the oil out of the country, using their corporations, their contractors. And then with the infrastructure situation, they're going to be the ones over there rebuilding. 
So they're gonna make a lot of money as the middleman with his uh, NTC pawns as their uh, talking hits. Since Gaddafi's pretty much out of the picture. Even if he survives, he'll be marginalized because the country's in shambles and they're not gonna let him rebuild. You know, that's that's the situation. It's 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 the same thing that happened in Iraq. Gaddafi is not gone because of killing protesters. He's gone because he proposed leaving the dollar standard just like Saddam. It's also why they're getting pissed at it's also why they've been pissed at China ever since they started to ascend to power. This has nothing to do with liberation. Because Bahrain and Jordan won't be liberated, nor will Algeria or Saudi Arabia. Or will Bahrain or any of those other countries that America likes who are protesting. But I must say, I I must I really must admit I'm a, I'm impressed with Obama. He is he is a brilliant strategist. Gauging Gaddafi's military strength by offering him weapons, then attacking based on what he lacked. Not since Woodrow Wilson has there been such a cold and brutal, sinister president. He both disgusts and amazes me at the same time in his ignominious dealings, working hand in hand with the right to protect the rich and working in the interest of big business at the expense of the average citizen. Slaughtering innocents the world over to lock down resources at overinflated uh, prices, passing toothless legislation that he knows will get picked apart while shilling to his supporters with his little eloquent speeches. That man is pure, utter genius. They've created problems and then they come with solutions. Solutions that don't benefit anyone except for those who fill their pockets. And who do they do it at? They do it at your expense. And you notice there are no alternatives right now. I mean, if if Obama doesn't get elected, his his, his opponent's going to be Rick Perry. So right now, you are in between a rock and a hard place. And you know that in America, if you riot in the streets, you'll get slaughtered like they said they were doing in Libya. And Jack and Dandies, ain't nobody here gonna save you.